All right, welcome back to Mocha Don is Right. I am Mocha Don, and of course, we have to talk about the State of the Union Address. In the last part of this video, there's a really important economic message that you must hear and understand. Ben Shapiro hit on it perfectly. It's something I talked about probably much less eloquently in my inflation video and my taxes are coming for you video, but it's an important message to hear. But I wanted to tell you what I thought of the State of the Union Address. I thought it was terrible. I thought Joe Biden was divisive. I thought he was evil, in fact. And he showed really what a poor president he is and what a poor president he would continue to be if he were reelected. But even better than me, let's hear what Ben Shapiro said about it. So last night was Joe Biden's big State of the Union Address, and the stakes were high because, after all, this is a very closely fought election. The president of the United States is ailing. He has been trailing in the polls to Donald Trump, his arch nemesis. And all he really had to do was be alive and be normal. He did the first thing. He couldn't do the second thing like at all. And one wonders what exactly his team thought they were doing when they wrote this State of the Union address, which was extraordinarily divisive, really polarizing, really quite nasty. Did, did they think that the only way they were going to get him energetic enough for the speech was to ramp him up so high that they could not ramp him back down? Whatever cocktail they used to awaken him, did they use too much? Whatever it was, Joe Biden's State of the Union address last night was, I think, for him, a disaster in the making, not for Democrats. Democrats are pretending they love the thing, and they were always going to pretend that they loved the thing. Members of the media were always going to use words like feisty, energetic, combative. That, that was a foregone conclusion. But if you were the median voter, the person who's deciding between Joe Biden and Donald Trump, and you watched Joe Biden last night, did that make you think our country is in the best of hands? Or did it make you think, angry old man screams at clouds and also thinks many, many Americans are terrible people and also has his priorities totally screwed up. Because I think there are a lot of independents out there who are going to look at what Joe Biden did last night and how he acted and say to themselves, if they were trying to offer a contrast between crazy Trump over here and solid, stolid Joe over here, that missed. Attitudinally, it missed. Politically, it missed. Yes, it missed. It missed by a mile. In fact, I think everybody who watched that last night saw an angry old man who hates half of the American people. Now, he doesn't hate the leftists who give him money and keep him propped up and don't want his son prosecuted or him or his brother for all of the crimes they've committed. But it did show that he hates half of the American people. It was really, um, really a sad, sad thing to see. And it started out with him being like 25 or 30 minutes late. I mean, I think normally they show up on the hour and, and the actual speech takes about 10 minutes to get going. I think he was a full 25 minutes late arriving at the Capitol. And that just shows how little he cares about the American people. And here's why he was late, which is even more interesting. And so last night, he allowed his motorcade to be blocked for legitimately dozens of minutes on the most watched night of the presidential year by a bunch of nut jobs who were sitting in the middle of the street on behalf of terrorists who mass rape and murder people. So here was some of the footage last night in Washington, D.C. As we say, this was in the lead up to the State of the Union. Behind me are dozens of ceasefire protesters standing just a block or two away from the Capitol. They have shut down Pennsylvania Avenue, this major road, what they believe could be the motorcade route for President Biden as he makes his way from the White House to the Capitol for the State of the Union speech. Now, of course, they know it is unlikely that they would actually stop the motorcade. They considered this more of a symbolic protest. They wanted to block this road to, again, keep up that pressure campaign against the president as those uncommitted votes are happening across the country. They felt like this was the biggest platform where they could make a statement to the president, and actually block his route to come and speak in front of Congress. And again, CNN is very happy to cover all of this because the entire media narrative about Joe Biden's campaign is that he needs to push further to the left, more, more cowbell, more to the left. None of these people, by the way, were arrested. As we'll see, that was not the story for the entirety of the night. Someone was arrested for protesting last night, but it was not the people who are pro-Hamas. It was actually a gold star father. That's exactly right. The only people that they put in jail was the gold star father, who was the parent of one of the 13 people killed during Biden's disastrous Afghanistan withdrawal. That's the only person that got arrested. The people who blocked the president, the 
peaceful protesters in favor of terrorism and murder throughout the world. None of them were arrested. I don't understand that, but please put something in the comments and let me know if you think a Gold Star father should receive a little bit of special consideration. You know, I believe when people break the law, they should be arrested and prosecuted. I would make exceptions for people who lose their children and who don't commit any violent act. I'm going to make an exception for that. But let me know what you think. And please, while you're at it, like, follow, subscribe. We need you to subscribe and share the message. So that was, um, that was just really a sad thing that, that that was tolerated. But the entire speech was full of awful things. He actually declared that you, the American people, who are on the right. Let me rephrase that. You the right side of the political aisle, American people, the half of you that would consider even remotely voting for Donald Trump. You are the evil people. And January 6th was the equivalent of World War II and the Civil War. Really? I think not. I can't understand how anybody supports this man. I don't, but... Hey, if you support him and you're listening to this, put it in the comments. I want to hear why, because I don't know why anyone does. Anyway, take a look at this. Not since President Lincoln and the Civil War have freedom and democracy been under assault at home as they are today. Okay, so his excuse for being a terrible president is that he is facing the two most historic crises of the last two centuries in American life. World War II and the Civil War. Those are the two comparisons he makes off the bat. Now, let's just be clear about where we are in American life right now. You know what we're not doing? Killing each other by the hundreds of thousands, which is what actually happened during the Civil War. You know what we're not doing in America right now? Holding hundreds of thousands of people in abject servitude and bondage, which is what was happening during and before the Civil War in the South. You know what else is not happening right now? We are not fighting a globalized world war against the Nazis and the Japanese and their allies. That's a thing that's not happening right now. I mean, these are, just, these are things that I noticed. When he compares the state of the country to the Civil War and World War II, that says something about him. It says something about his governance. Because if we are living in a time where zero American troops are currently overtly committed abroad in a war, which is the case, right? We do not have boots on the ground in Ukraine. We do not have boots have on the ground in Gaza. Well, we'll get to that in a moment because Joe Biden wants to put boots on the ground in favor of Hamas in Gaza, effectively speaking. It's bizarre. It makes no sense. We'll get to that in a moment. But we don't have major troop commitments around the world right now. We don't have, according to him, any sort of serious economic turmoil. The economy is going great guns. And yet he's comparing us to 1941 and 1861. Why? Both of those situations, America had an enemy. Who are the enemies, according to Joe Biden? The enemies, as it turns out, are two. Russia and you. Those are the two enemies, according to Joe Biden. And that's the linkage. Okay, and let's talk about that. You are the enemy. Actually, Putin's not the enemy. Joe Biden and the folks in the UK really provoked Russia into the Ukraine war. I'm not making excuses for Russia. They never should have done it. It's been a war that's killed tens and tens of thousands of people, maybe even hundreds of thousands of people. It's a disaster which cannot be justified by the provocations that Putin did have. But he's not attacking the United States. His, his, his entire posture is defensive against NATO. He's saying, don't shove NATO up against our borders. This is the same thing John Kennedy said about putting nuclear missiles in Cuba. It's the easiest problem to solve on the planet. Joe, uh, Joe Biden is incapable of solving it. Donald Trump will solve it in like a day or two. No doubt about that. It's just not that tough. And he won't have to capitulate to Putin to do it. But the important thing is, you're the enemy. You, moderate, conservative, white, Christian, patriotic, American. God help you if you're a Republican, black American. That would be, oh, that's terrible, you know. But, but, but you're the problem. You're the people that he most fears. And, you know, he should fear you because if, if we were to allow our country to continue to descend into the hell that it is way on its way to descending into, 
we would, we would no doubt have another civil war. I know nobody who is going to put up with an invasion of their country from the southern border. And, you know, it, the left is going to get its way. We're going to have a civil war someday, but we're not going to have it today. We're not in that situation today. January 6th was a largely peaceful protest with about 90 or 100 idiots who deserve to be arrested and jailed. And instead, they jail over a thousand people for nothing. People who were waved in by the Capitol Hill police. People who were protesting committed not a single act. And they won't identify the FBI informants, more than 200 of which were in the crowd. For all we know, every violent actor was in fact an FBI informant, but we can't find that out. That needs to change. One last point here is that Joe Biden lied about the economy in some very specific in way, ways that he relies on ignorance. And it's important that you not be one of the ignorant. It's important that you understand what causes inflation and why drug prices are high. And what causes inflation is always the same thing. I did a whole video on that with Milton Friedman clips. But what causes inflation is too much money chasing too few goods and services. From 2020 to about 2022, the Federal Reserve Board increased the money supply 40%. It's actually 39.6 something percent. They did that because... The, the Congress and the president made the decision to helicopter drop money on people. And when you helicopter drop money on people, you can't sell the bonds fast enough to pay for that. It would destroy the bond market. The Fed has no choice in the matter. At that point, they have no choice. They have to buy the bonds, which effectively prints money. They buy the bonds and they pay for them with money made out of nothing. And that increased the money supply 40% in two years. That's why you had inflation. And that's why we will continue to have inflation. And that's why the Fed's not going to cut. And I don't think they're going to cut in June. Your drug prices are high because the United States pays the bill for all of the drug development for the entire world. It may cost a dollar to make a pill. But over the first four years of that prescription's life, they have to get rid of, you know, maybe $10 billion in development and regulatory cost. And so maybe that pill cost oh, $200. Well, they sell it to you in the United States for $300. They sell it in the rest of the world for the, you know, if it costs them a dollar just to make it, they sell it for a buck and a half because they, they can. Meanwhile, you're paying $250 for the same pill because this country doesn't hold these drug companies and doesn't hold these other countries accountable to pay their fair share. It would be very simple legislation to say that no drug patented and approved by the FDA in the United States can be sold anywhere in the world for less than it is sold for in the United States. That would force Canada and the UK and the EU to pay their fair share of that cost. Instead of paying a buck and a half a pill, they might have to pay 30 bucks a pill. But instead of you paying $250 a pill, you'll also pay $30 a pill. It'll level that playing field, which is how you are getting screwed by your government. And it's both parties, for sure. But I just gave you the simple solution. It's a simple solution that Donald Trump absolutely is following. That's the Donald Trump solution. And, and of course, Joe Biden wants to make your housing costs lower by giving you money. That's just helicopter money. All that's going to do is cause inflation. That is exactly the problem. Same thing with the tax the rich. What he says about billionaires, by the way, is factually untrue. Billionaires pay tax on their income. Most of their billions are held in stock that never gets sold. So if they get dividends, you know, they have to pay taxes on that at a rate of like 40%. If they have capital gains, they get a lower tax rate because we have not lowered the capital gains rate far enough to maximize the revenue. 
It's a, just a fact that of all the taxes, when you cut the capital gains tax rate, the government gets more revenue. We saw that with President Trump's tax cuts. Government revenue went up, not down. So you, you need to look at the way systems work, and the only proper goal of the tax system is not to equalize the suffering. <laughs> because, believe me, no matter how poor you are in this country, you don't want your suffering equalized onto you. The, the point is to raise revenue for the government. The entire tax system's only job is to raise revenue. And if lowering taxes raises more revenue, then they should be lowered. And if raising taxes does not raise more revenue, then it should be left alone. And there's a thing in economics, I talk about it in my Taxes Are Coming For You video called Hauser's Law. And it, it, it talks about how the, no matter what the government does in a progressive tax system, and the U.S. has the most progressive tax system in the uh, civilized world, the, you, can't, you can't extract more money by raising taxes. You're always going to get about the same 19, 19.5%. That's always what you're going to get, give or take a percent. You can't, you can't get 25% of GDP, which is what this country spends. You can't get that with a progressive tax system. You have to use a European tax system, which they are going to try to push on you, a VAT tax, which is why Europeans pay a much higher tax rate at a much lower income and why they pay huge VAT taxes, which are essentially a sales tax, which is taxed several times before you pay it. So it drives the price of things way up. You know, 2% VAT tax can end up costing you 12% when you go to buy a product. Ben Shapiro lays out some of this. He did a really good job. I want you to hear it from him because um, maybe you don't believe me. I loved this. He started talking about how inflation was really, really bad. And so to solve inflation, he's going to give you money, which is the opposite of solving inflation. Inflation is defined as too many dollars following too few goods. That is what creates price inflation. And he's like, I well, know no, inflation's bad. I'm going to solve it by uh, creating more dollars. I know the cost of housing is so important to you. If inflation keeps coming down, mortgage rates will come down as well. And the Fed acknowledges that. But I'm not waiting. I want to provide an annual tax credit that will give Americans $400 a month for the next two years as mortgage rates come down to put toward their mortgages when they buy their first home or trade up for a little more space. Oh, so free money. That'll solve the inflation crisis. Then all of a sudden he started jabbering about how he wanted to fly people to Moscow. I like this part a lot. This is pretty great. I'm going to get in trouble for saying that, but if you want to get an Air Force One and fly to Toronto, Berlin, Moscow, I mean, excuse me, and it, well, even <laughs> Moscow, probably. <laughs> and bring your prescription with you, and I promise you I'll get it for you for 40% the cost you're paying now. Is same company, same drug, same place. Again, He's going to fly you to Moscow. So, so now he's doing Tucker Carlson's video about how cheap groceries are in Moscow. That's where we are now with this president. Like, good, good. Those synapses. Really, fi it's fiery, guys. It's combative. He's more alive than he's ever been. But the, the, the underlying point that he is making, which is that you can buy medications more cheaply abroad than you can in the United States, that is because those other countries are cheating. It's because they're cheating. And no American president, right or left, has had the balls to say to any of these other countries that you should not be allowed to pay a lower price than we are paying here in the United States. And we will sanction you if you do. The reason they're doing that is because they are collectively bargaining on behalf of nationalized healthcare systems with drug companies in the United States. And those drug companies being underpaid by Canada then overcharge American citizens to make up for it. The American government should step in, not in order to skew the market at home, which kills all of the research and development, which actually creates the drugs in the first place, but by forcing foreign countries to pay their fair share, the same way that Donald Trump has forced foreign countries to pay their fair share with regard to NATO. So that's the story there. I think Ben's more articulate than I am in telling it. But one thing you need to know, I mean, I actually have a background in finance. I was a consultant to the Board of Governors of the Federal Reserve System twice under Alan Greenspan. I had two federal appointments. So I can actually speak factually about economics, at least macroeconomics. And let me know in the comments if you want me to do some long form, really boring 
videos about how that works. All you really need to understand is that if inflation's not coming down fast enough for Joe Biden, the number one thing he can do to help inflation come down faster, and by the way, you never get your money back, it's just the rate of increase that's going down. You're never going to get the money back you've lost from inflation. But if that's bothering Joe, the thing to do is to reduce spending. The reason we have inflation is because the government deficit spending requires the Fed to print money. Don't blame the Fed. Blame Congress. Blame the president. But mostly Congress. Don't blame the Fed because they are just reacting to the pile of shit problems that Congress parks on their doorstep. And they have no choice in the matter. They can't defy Congress and say, hey, we are not going to print money. We're going to destroy the entire economy because you decided to spend money we can't get back fast enough by selling bonds out of the Treasury. They can't do that. In any case, thank you so much for watching the show. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Share this video with your friends. I'll tr I try not to keep them too long, but uh, let me know in the comments how in-depth you want me to get on things, because I can get pretty deep on economic things. I'd be happy to do that for you. And God bless you, and thank you again. Thank you so much for taking the time. You have a great day.